where the greatest podcast your friends have never heard of is the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. And we figure if you enjoy that level of hyperbolically pretentious self-praise, you're going to enjoy our show. So let's get started. It's come up on the show before, and only just recently that I even really think about it, because I was listening to the song, uh, Give Me the Loot. There's a part of the song that even on the album is censored. It comes up a good bit. Sometimes it's because, like we talked about with Eminem, having to change the lyrics to My Name Is, sometimes you're sampling a song, and when you're asking for permission, you play them the song, and they're like, uh, that's gotta go, or else you're not getting my sample. So that's the reason for some of uh, why that happens. This one, I was gonna ask you if you, uh, if you knew about this, actually. The lyric is... I wouldn't give a fuck if you're blank. Just give me the baby rings and the number one mom pendant. Bitch get blank for her earrings and bangles. They thought pregnant would be too offensive. Oh yeah, I remember that. Someone rumored to be puffy thought it would be too offensive. So strangling out a pregnant woman would have been too much. (laughs) That's the line. Another one that I figured would hit close to home for you, uh, Protect Your Neck. Yeah, because the bloody version or whatever, that's the version that's uncensored, but it's not on the album. And I remember that specifically. Yeah, according to this website, according to Complex, it says that they wanted Protect Your Neck to be a radio single. So they thought it would have it would have made a better impression uh, to have it be completely censored. Which, yeah, that's kind of jarring when you're listening to the album and all of a sudden just one song has, has the shit cut out. With the random martial arts references, like, in place of the curse words, you know? Oh, yeah, the little sound effects. Another one which is very early 90s, uh, the song Machine Gun Funk, uh, back to Biggie. Uh, for the jackers, the jealous-ass crackers in the blank, I'll make you prove that it's bulletproof. They cut out blue suits. Oh. Because in the early 90s, they uh, they wanted to tone down on the anti-cop violence. <laughs> Maybe that piece on the 5 o'clock news about having a song about Biggie shooting up cops. Uh, maybe not the best look. Do you remember No Apologies from Eminem Presents the Re-Up? I am not failing, you fuckers are not ready, because I got jelly, like, as pot belly. Like, it scissors out what comes before pot belly. And I remember being like, that's weird pot, what, what, what could possibly come before pot belly that needs to be censored? And I found out it was the name, it was Beyonce. So he was saying, I got jelly like Beyonce's pot belly. Oh, shit. I think it was omitted just because, like, yo, Jay-Z was with her at the time, and you might get kind of cross about that shit. Uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, my God. There's a whole section here designated to Eminem, and uh, there's a song, Bust a Rhyme. It was uh, Missy Elliott featuring Eminem. Uh, fucking pulled a biggie. Hit a fucking blank in her blank with luggage. Uh, originally, pregnant bitch in her stomach with luggage. My thing is, what the fuck is up with these rappers and pregnant women? <laughs> like, I, I guess they, I don't know. Like, it's just obscure enough that it's like, oh, it's random. It's like, mm. Or it just, it just shows just how heartless they are, you know? Yeah, that's it. In the song Marshall Mathers, which is it, bitch, Mrs. Briggs or Ms. Mathers? Oh, it doesn't yeah! matter. Your blank is an F word. Uh... He was saying that her lawyer, and mentioned him by name, was an F-word, and there was a $10 million defamation suit. So, what's funny to me, what I always found funny about that one, is that it goes, Which is it, bitch? Mrs. Briggs and Miss Matters. It doesn't matter. Blank. And then the F-word. So, it's just... (laughs) Yeah, it's like, you might as well have just taken that whole thing out. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it, but it's so funny because, like, um, it seems like the the last word should have been the one that censored. What could have possibly come before that? That was the thing that needed to be cut out. You know what I mean? Like, this is the thing I don't understand. Okay, so the whole thing about, um, you know, when I found out that thing was messed up, what I decided to do was bleep it out so that no one would know. But, oh, man, it turns out that people can find out what the lyric is. It's like, yeah, of course people can find out what the fucking lyric is after you bleep it out. What are you stupid? You think people are idiots? 
there was the recent thing of Tyler the Creator where he was like, well, you know, I, I bleeped out the F word. And it's just like, I wonder if it's like, oh, we found out at a, at a certain point that it was like, oh, there was no going back. But like, you'd think if it's that big of a deal, you'd take the time and fucking make it right from the song I'm Back. I take seven blank from blank. Yes. Stand him in a line. And that's a whole school of bullies shot up at one time. Now, here's what's funny to me about that. He censors out the words kids and Columbine. The next line is still, that's a whole school of bullies shot up at one time. Shooting up kids at a school is offensive. Right. You'd take out the whole part. But no, it was specifically the fact that it was Columbine that it felt like it was too close to home too soon. But then the other one in Kim, there's a blank, old little blank laying yeah. dead with a slit throat in your living room. And this one's pretty harsh. Took out the words four year and boy, because again, child murder <laughs> is the line, apparently. Yeah, that's pretty intense. I can say that's pretty intense. I think we can universally agree that, that that's a bit much. I picture that it's all Paul, who is responsible for changing the word in fall. So, like, it gets to that point that someone has to tell M no. Like, no one in the studio, no one in the writing phase, <laughs> no one in the recording phase or the mastering yeah, phase. exactly. At no point. Like, does he just surprise the producers with this music? Like... Like, I'd be firing motherfuckers if I was Paul. Like, don't let this shit get to my desk. What the fuck am I paying you for? <laughs> right? Paul has to be the last line of defense, and if it gets past him, then we're all fucked. This is a pretty intense lyric from the song We As Americans. I don't rap for dead presidents. I'd rather see the president blank. Oh, yeah, and he actually got investigated for that one. Oh, my God, did he really? Yeah. Holy shit. Because, like, I mean, we have to take every threat against the president seriously. Wow. But it's just like, I mean, I guess it's possible that a fucking multimillionaire would want to risk his fucking career trying to kill the president. (laughs) I just don't think it's very fucking likely. People are fucking stupid, though. And people hear that shit, and they try to do it. You know what's interesting about Eminem, like, in his music? He kind of brings that up a lot. Like, where he says things where it's just like, I think it was on Who Knew. I'm just as fucked up as you would have been if you would have been in my shoes. Who would have thought Slim Shady would have been something that you would have bought that would have made you get a gun and shoot at a cop? I just said it. I I know if you do it or not. (laughs) (laughs) This is just like... I think we kind of fail to take it to a scope of like, you know, there was a time where Slim Shady and Marshall Mathers, who that was, was a person that no one cared about. And then he made something that people cared about. And then people who already have fucked up dispositions and shit like that. You know what I mean? You know, they get inspired, quote unquote inspired, but it's like, it's not like they weren't already thinking whatever shit. And then they go like, oh yeah, I was listening to this, you know, to get me hyped up to do whatever. And then you just go like, well, God damn it. I just wanted to make music for the other 9 million people who just want to hear some music that's just like, you know, incendiary asshole music. Why can't we watch our WWE without someone being able to take care of their kids enough for us to not have to worry about someone doing a pile driver and their kids. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can't we just have our good, clean fun? I picture Eminem writing a song and just thinking, man, that's a dope bar. I, I hope no one takes it seriously and tries to kill someone because of it. Like, you shouldn't have to think of that. <laughs> when you're writing a fucking rap song, you shouldn't have to fucking take that extra step. I'm with people in the sense of saying that, like, I don't think there should be, like, censorship of artists in the sense of, like, yeah, people should say what they want, right? Artists should be allowed to say what they want. But we as, you know, people who are looking at other people making art should be free to criticize what they believe your message is sending through what you're creating. Like, if you don't like that someone said something that was incendiary, like, okay, maybe... I think what's more important is talking about why the language is incendiary and improving upon the relations that caused that language to be incendiary in the first place. I think that relationship is more important than the art itself. And so that's why I say like, I, it, you know, when you hear an artist say a word that you don't like on a song, the more important question is, isn't 
how can I stop him from saying that? It's how can I stop people from thinking that that language is okay the norm? I- I'm going to use this point to say right now, unless there's some context I'm not seeing, I actually think it's completely fine that Quentin Tarantino uses the N word in in all of his movies. Because what I personally find interesting about him using the N-word is that it, to me, felt revelatory, uh, especially being younger, finding out, wait, white people actually do say the N-word way more often than, like, you think they do. They just don't say it around you because you're, you know what I mean? Like, they don't say it around me because I'm black, so of course they're not going to say it around me. But, like, racist people, if they're around other, either other racist people or white people who aren't going to challenge them, oh, of course they're going to say it. It makes it feel that much more real. Exactly. And that's what huh. I thought was interesting about his films. And I feel like people don't bring that up as much, you know? No, yeah, because the only argument I ever heard was from, like, Spike Lee basically being, like, you're white, you can't say that in the movie. And it's yeah, like, and that always just felt a little too reductionist. It's like, dude, I'm on your side on a lot of things, but, like, Really? In the context of a character. At that point, I think you're almost kind of on the same side of, like, someone saying, like, you can't show murder. Exactly. Because, like, did you really think he, in his spare time, kills people? Like, no, he did in the movie (laughs) as a character, but that's not him in the everyday. And I guess in in a certain extent... You could, you could apply that to someone like Eminem being like, well, he doesn't say that word so flippantly. Like, there's a difference between someone saying, uh, Eminem saying the F word on a song and Eminem saying he's going to kill someone on a song. The action of what he is saying is different. Me saying I want to, I'm going to kill someone on a song is different than the actual act of killing someone. Eminem yeah. saying the F word to you for you to hear is no different than the action of someone saying the F word to offend you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, <laughs> that, that F, its function is to offend. So by That's that, true. you know what I'm trying to say? Like, that yeah. is the intended point of that. So it is a little different in that respect. At this point with Eminem, it, it, it's like the, it, it's like the blackface. Uh, I remember we talked about it before. Uh, homophobia is hip hop's blackface. You just ha- kind of have to go like, that was a really great film. I love the cinematography. What the fuck was up with the blackface? Oh my god. But, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to, you do have to address it, because it's like, you can't act like that wasn't there. You can't act like that doesn't in some way inform your enjoyment of the piece. The first of two Patreon-requested album reviews this week is by, requested by, anyway, Matthew Dalmage, and the album is Fear of a Blank Planet by Porcupine Tree. And if you would like to request an album to be reviewed on the show, it is as simple as a one-time Patreon pledge to either of our pages. That's patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. And another example of how English beat that first album was like five stars across the board. This album, in its day, was universally heralded as just one of the all-time greatest prog rock albums I was even talking to Dylan, and he was like, oh shit, you're talking about Porcupine Tree, they're fucking awesome. Not until the last two tracks did I get it. Really? I was not a fan of most of the album. No way! I don't don't know what to do. (laughs) I thought the vocalist, I couldn't stand his voice, I thought he sounded pretty bad. No! Oh, The lyrics no. were some of the most simple, like, not even really going that... Like, I, if abstract is like prog rock, like, musically, you couldn't have gotten a polar opposite than the lyrics on most of these songs. You weren't feeling this at all? So, okay, so Fear of a Blank Planet, all right? So this album is a concept album, right? And it's about, you know, this kid who's... Who, who just is dealt with the death of their dad, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the album's inspired by, like, Luna Park or something like that. Is like this. Yeah, this, I saw that. And I thought it was kind of interesting, especially the, with the track, uh, about, uh, track two, My Ashes. Uh, it was really tuneful, sweet, uh, melodies, harmonies, like the falsettos. I like the little robotic ending they did at the end, at the end there, cause, you know, 
the this was the song that had like lots of really sweet orchestra sort of playing in it, and then you had like the sort of like I, I don't God damn it, I thought I was gonna be able to gush with you about this stuff, man. This sounded like some fucking you know from the uh, from a Matrix or or Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, like early two thousands. You know, we're a movie that's being taken seriously, and we're gonna win Academy Awards, and this is the song that's gonna win for best song this year. Like this kind of felt like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I, I fucking dug the shit out of this album. I love the, the, the scattered. So I, the song, My Ashes, where the idea is that the scattered ashes are telling the perspective of what's happening in the song. I really fucking thought that was dope. I don't know. Um, I, it, like, basically the premise of this album is, you know, people are unfeeling now because we're all on our medications and all on our phones. You know, that, uh, who's that dude that does those, uh, paintings? Uh, of like, you know, kids these days in the internet and, you know, uh, they, uh, yeah. Pokemon Go, but the Pokemon are like riding them and controlling them because technology, am I right? But I honestly have to say, I feel like the way it was handled here was in a way that did not feel preachy. I felt like it was handled in a way that was artistic because like I said, you know, the message is definitely, okay, yeah, we get it. You know, don't let technology, you know, take over your life and everything like that. But I feel like the way it's delivered, it's through a story that illustrates that, I want to say that emotion, but uh, funnily enough, the whole thing is that there is that rejection of emotion, that lack of emotion, that inability to come to terms with certain feelings and using medication in order to to mask those feelings. I, I thought the way it was handled in a way that played out the story instead of just browbeating you and wagging its finger. I like the way it sort of, it showed the message of, you know, don't let technology take over your life and don't let the, don't be over medicated. It showed that in a way that was laying it out instead of pushing it on you. Like, you know, like a type of Hobson joint would, you know? Um, I don't know. I really dug it. I, I and I thought the musicality wow. was really yeah, man. I I thought it was a nice listen. Um, even though it, it was kind of funny, like you know, some of these tracks are like seventeen minutes long, but then you look, there's only six tracks. So it's like, all right, I can't even get mad altogether. It's about like fifty minutes, you know. And I feel like it's a cohesive um prog rock joint i remember um looking up interviews where because you know the more i found out about this band the more i was like oh oh these guys have been around since the 80s oh my god okay this is a big fucking deal <laughs> i had that moment of you know, oh oh this is a big fucking deal <laughs> it, 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 it's gonna matter if i say something about this man <laughs> you know like i was like oh yeah but like I mean, it's well earned. I mean, these motherfuckers apparently have been working for a long time, and this feels like the album of someone. Uh, it's actually funny. I looked up their origins, and they started off as a joke. They started off as like, oh, uh, just this fake, you know, uh, quasi pretentious like rock prog rock group, and then he just started taking it seriously. So it's basically it's a joke that he took seriously. And I wow. kind of like how it's blossomed into sort of this sort of full-fledged album idea like this. I think it's pretty cool. My Ashes was my lowest rated song on the album. Whoa, man. Nah, yeah. man. Whoa. Wow. Nah, I loved uh, Anesthetize, where, where he says, uh, it, 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 this is exactly what I mean. This is exactly the perfect lyric. Uh, he says, the dust in my soul makes me feel the weight in my legs, my head in the clouds, and I'm zoning out. I'm watching TV, but I find it hard to stay conscious. I'm totally bored, but I can't switch off. And it's like the way it ends up explaining what he's feeling ends up making up for the sort of like the topic itself, you know? Like, you, you know how I always say, like, you can talk about anything as long as you make it interesting. I feel like he makes this topic interesting in a way that I, I was, I was not interested. <laughs> oh, in an unsentimental. Um... I love the very first lyric. He says, I never want to be old and I don't want dependence. It's no fun to be told that you can't blame your parents anymore. And I thought that was interesting because it was kind of showing how like, I mean, like what are adults? You know, we're just grown kids, right? And there is that sort of universal idea of like, how does abuse continue, right? How do all the bad things in this world continue? They continue because of people who don't want to take the blame for their issues, right? Like, uh, it, I mean, in this specific case, he's talking about his alcoholism. Like, you know, if I just say, well, the reason why I'm drinking is because my dad was, was shitty. And so that's why I'm doing this. It's like, okay, but now you've got this habit and you're going to enforce it on someone else. 
You know, and so it's like, okay, but are you going to take responsibility for, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I thought it played with a lot of ideas in a way that was interesting to me. I definitely love the way, way out of here, rocked hard as fuck. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so that's what, that's where I, ca- that's where I catch you again. <laughs> I really, really liked way out of here and sleep together. I was so mad that that energy that was in these last two songs was like nowhere in the first half or whatever of the album. I was, I was just like, man, if the whole album was like that, I would, I would have been able to get down. You just weren't feeling one. where it was going. I, uh, yeah, I thought musically those last two songs were were way better. The the drumming on those two specifically uh, stood out. Uh, I thought the vocal style on Sleep Together fit the singer better. I just hated his like delivery, and I wasn't a fan of his voice in most of the like album. You didn't like his falsetto? No. No. Because no. I gotta say, I... Man, I it's very interesting that people were saying, like... This is the the greatest uh, prog rock band, or what, the most important band you've never heard of, or whatever. And that's kind of why I was joking uh, about you know the podcast at the beginning. Cause oh I, shit! Okay, I, I legit believe it. I was like, I'm listening. I was like, this feels like music I should have been told about. I actually, not gonna lie, bro, I kind of like this more than Radiohead. I can't even lie. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Like, and that's the band that everyone's supposed to like love, love. And I'm like, actually. After hearing In Rainbows, I would go back to that in a heartbeat uh, compared to this. I don't know, man. This is my Phil Ox to everyone else's Bob Dylan, you know? <laughs> oh, I see. Nah, I, uh, I liked the, or at least I assume this was the dude from King Crimson on uh, Way Out of Here because the guitar was way different like it stood the fuck out now as a fan of rush on um on the third track alec lifeson uh the guitarist where the fuck was he like i didn't hear the sound or style or tone that sounded any different than the first two tracks i couldn't i would not have known that there was a guest guitarist in that song if you didn't tell me i was thinking of another track in which there's a really cool solo on that one you're right I believe it's the one where it's like there's a guitar part that repeats and I like what they're doing there with the the hemiola of like the off time and just seeing how it fits back in with the rhythm. I love it. I absolutely love it when artists do that. But yeah, I do remember someone saying that there was a solo on a song and I remember being like, wait, that wasn't there. I mean, the guitar work was cool, but it didn't feel like a ripping solo, you know? No, and especially on a 17 minute song, like there were parts of that song that I liked but I would never listen back to that song for those few times that I thought were cool when most of it was underwhelming, in my opinion, repetitive, especially lyrically. Like, lyric-wise, this album didn't grab me at all. Music-wise, it made up for it a bit. I wasn't feeling how this was, like, one of the greatest prog rock albums. Like, at some parts of this album, it felt so by the book. The whole thing of prog is that it's supposed to be, like... Switching up time signatures and it's fucking like fucking with the perception of what rock music is. And it's kind of more like art rock almost. It's just sounded like a straight up rock album for most of it. And that's fine. But when you go in expecting prog rock, I I didn't get that as much. Mm, So no, no, not as much love for this one. What would you rate it? Three. Okay. See, I would give it a four. Yeah, I didn't hate it. I just wasn't, like, bowled over, impressed by it, as Hmm. everybody under the fucking sun seemed to be. I was just like, it's (laughs) alright. I think they might have better albums than this, from what it sounded like, but everyone was talking like this Yeah, because this is, like, their ninth one. Yeah, I might go back to maybe some of the older stuff, maybe when they're a little bit younger. I don't know. I didn't know they were at it this long. That, That is impressive, especially because, like, this album is tight, you know? Like... It doesn't feel like they fucking dropped the ball at any point. Yeah, this doesn't feel like the album from someone who's been, like, who's being weighed down by time. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Yeah, no, like, for, it for doing fresh. it as long as they were doing, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still pretty impressed. Uh, my favorite songs, uh, Way Out of Here, Sleep Together, uh, Least Favorites, um, 
My Ashes had the lowest, then Sentimental, then that 17-minute track, then Fear of a Black Planet, Blank Planet. I like the Public Enemy reference there that they did. I, I don't get why, though. Well, he, he explained, which actually explained the album cover, which is, I, I came to appreciate it. Because at first I was just like, okay, this just looks like, when I first heard it, I was like, alright, this is just creepy, weird internet music. Is Fear of a Black Planet itself a play on something, or was that just something they came up with? Public I Enemy? think that's just something they came up with. Um, See, like, I get the, oh, Lost in Technology, and... On, the, on yeah. the album cover, it seems like he's got, like, reflection of maybe, like, was it, like, TV screens or something? Well, yeah, and what I like about that is the specific, the specificity of, like, that's what your life looks like. If someone could show you what your life looked like, if all you were doing was being online all the time, like, that's what you would look like, just this blank, you know, thing. You know what I mean? This is the thing that kind of threw me off, all right? So the lead singer, Steve Wilson of Porcupine Tree, says... The title is a nod to the 80s album by Public Enemy, Fear of a Black Planet, and the 80s were when I was a teenager. At this time, race relations seemed to be the most important issue in young people's mind. And it struck me that in the 21st century, what's replaced race relations as the number one concerning thing for young people is a kind of terminal boredom, a Generation X thing. It's the blank generation. And I'm just like... Ah. No, nah, the, the race thing, that, that's, that's a pretty big issue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you stopped paying attention, my dude. But what I love is like this is 2007, and so it's like, like, did, did white people think race wasn't an issue in 2007? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, oh my god, wait, wait, did white people really think it wasn't an issue? <laughs> you know, it's like, and it was like, out of one hand, it's like, I can't even be mad. It's just like, is he just like ignorant of this? Does he just not know? Did no one tell him? It seems like it. <laughs> you know, and, and it's kind of funny. You know, it does seem to be that thing, like, I remember somebody uh, did this thing where it was like, well, if you ask, you know, white people, like, when do you think race relations started getting bad? And a lot of them will say around the time Obama got elected. And I'm not saying he's saying that, but I'm just saying that, like, I have noticed that's a thing where it's just like, why do white people think race relations got bad now that the black person got elected? Why is that when it got bad? Oh, because they couldn't ignore it anymore. And they thought it would... And what they thought was black people would stop complaining <laughs> if there was a black president. And then they did stop complaining. And then they were just like, but everything was supposed to be okay now. Why are you angry, black people? <laughs> Let's go over to... um. Your Patreon request, you could introduce yeah, that Yeah, Nikki one. W. requested Rashad and Confidence. Okay. The element of surprise. And can I just say, there was nothing surprising about this album. There wasn't anything surprising. Ironically, uh, if you're looking at the first song, there's nothing new. Especially about this, dude. And of course, it's always this type of artist that has to give you the intro that's saying, "Oh man, you better oh, look out, fuck off, because we're giving you something different, something you weren't expecting." <laughs> this was logic level of up its own ass. Of this is the album that changed everything. Man, we knew something was missing. We had to give you this jewel. <laughs> it felt like the whole world's been waiting. For what? I'm sorry, but for what? This is the most by the numbers. Hip hop album. Not taking any goddamn chances. You got the dirty drums. You know, you got the, the <sighs> echoey old school samples. Oh, you got the boom bap for the street cred. Mm -hmm. Yup. Mm -hmm. But not any of the charm that young Sinatra had. Dude, this album for how many tracks? Like 12 songs and like 14, 15 tracks or yeah, whatever? Yeah. Had like two topics. He's gonna get this money and he's eventually gonna be on top. Mm hmm. And, and what was the other one? Uh, the other one was, uh, hold on. You might have only had one, honestly. Um, uh, <laughs> I think that might have been it. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, he's talking about how how great they are. How man, like everyone's talking about money. 
But, like, yeah, that was the thing. There's so many rappers talking about money and yeah, exactly. cars. Yeah, you sound like any white guy critiquing rap music. Like, man, it's always about hoes yeah. and money He's going to get on top, and everyone else needs to stop talking about money and cars. <laughs> <laughs> Even though what he's rapping about is how he wants to get out of school so he can get money in cars. Yeah, like, he fucking flip-flops on that one issue so, so much. Man, this is a very passable album by... The thing is, it's like, it's not that it's even bad, it's just not special. It's just not great. No. And I feel bad saying that because it's just like it's not that i hate it and you know these are like more you know probably more underground cats so you know you gotta feel bad like you know what i mean i want to shit on him like in if this was the 90s you know he would definitely have 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 his place you know what i mean like but it's just kind of i don't know there was one part in brand new that i highlighted of, and I think this is the only time I highlighted lines of being like, oh shit, that's actually pretty good. Uh, the Mike Crusher and Predator holding the pen much deadlier than any pistol with the potential to pump lead in ya turn rappers into discouraged competitors cause what I write separates the real MCs from the replicas. I thought that was clever. Yeah, but, okay, so this is what I was gonna say. He has a type of flow... And uh, where a lot of times, like, he overcomplicates things for the sake of putting in clever-sounding rhymes. Mm. And that's not automatically a bad thing unless it's, like, you can kind of notice it. And I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I, I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's specifically when you hear other people doing it where you're just like, oh, that's what that kind of feels like. You know, like, uh, I make people feel all the stories that my pen describes. I don't need fancy jewels combined with expensive rides. All right. Or platinum plaques for my career to be legitimized. To be the illest alive is what I visualize. It's just like, people don't talk like that. You know? It's, and it's, it's not even that it's bad. It's just kind of just like, hmm. Yeah, all right. And uh, what was the other lyric? This is a rap epidemic that's soon to be spread. Resistance to all clinical solutions and meds. You heard Rashad is the truth. That's what the rumors allege. But the proof was seen in the masses moving their heads on every corner of every town where my music extends. Gotta tour cities and collect numerous. And it like, it is like, and the thing is, like, a lot of the other runs aren't bad, but it's just that little weird of where my music extends. Whenever he's doing something that's supposed to be like the dope punchline, I realize that it's not really like as hard as it could go. You know, I don't think he was even trying for dope punchlines. With a guy like this, the point needs to be dope punchlines. It can't just be I'm just rapping about how I'm gonna make it, and you're cool with it. And I have, you know, mul- I have like lyricism. You know, I have um, I, I have a lot of multisyllabic, you know, uh, flows. You know, but it's just like yeah, but I need something in them. You know, I need it needs to be more than just water, you know, and there needs to be some flavor in it, you know? I've got a like, perfect w- example of that in Understand. I'm thinking of the perfect lines until my dome's empty for listeners to have my quote frozen in their memory. Radio don't impress me with these finger snap tunes. If it ain't for the kids, it's for the killers and rap goons. I go beyond both, so you can't box me in. I'm making timeless records, outlasting the hottest trend. What the fuck are you even saying with this? Like, I'm not buying any of this, dude. You should make records, but what good is your house and chain when your legacy is an artist that's showered in shame? And then, but it's just the same lyric. I got the urge to devour you lames. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, God. That's such a, like, you know, like, high school bar, you know? like it's There was a lot bad. of high school bars like, on this shit. Yeah, like, they're not bad, but they're on their way to be better writing, you know? But I, I did like Pass Me By, though. That was actually a pretty good uh, song in and of itself. I, I was just reading how it ends, how it ends where he says, um, I gotta act now or else uh, lay to face the consequences. 
watching life leave you behind with no accomplishments. I was like, all right, you know, you, like you don't want to, you don't want to go through life. And, and, uh, basically the whole verse is him saying like, I don't want to waste all this time chasing girls and then have my life end up being all these girls saying to me, man, if you would have just made something out of yourself, you could have been kind of attractive, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> all these girls. Like I kind of like that's all, that's all, actually all right, you know. Um, but they keep asking. That was one of the worst ones. Where he says, "Yeah, that's how it. That's how it sounds when my presence is close. Cause it's kind of like a shop. You'll get expelled from the toast. Like, did I not get like this? One of those libraries is like it feels like something should have been there, but I didn't. I didn't get it. After that, he says, "Nothing less than seven O's is what I'm destined to gross." Those would be the end results of me writing these clever quotes. And I was like, I mean, it wasn't really that. There's a lot of shit on that about bragging how good your lines are. And when they're not that great, maybe you should not do that. Like in pen on display, he goes, Mm -hmm. what you hear is nothing less than penmanship at its, by the way, penmanship. I think that has to do with like how legibly. You write, isn't yeah. it? Like like your handwriting? Anyway, yeah, what yeah. you hear is nothing less than penmanship at its best, leaving critics very impressed once my pen is finessed. Something golden eras, <laughs> b- oh, something golden era-esque, but still futures ahead. What? I. It's not light years ahead of anything. It's so <laughs> yeah. fucking... Oh my god, it's so basic. It's rap light, you know? Like, yeah. th- this one lyric where he says, I look at rap like sports where record labels as teams, and I'm a free agent, which means I'm soon to be in the major leagues. That's not what it means. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, and, that's a really that, optimistic way of looking at it. That's not what it means. That's not a bar good enough to deserve what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, like... That just feels like no one wants to sign you. Like, you set up the metaphor of them being teams and you trying to get on the team, but you didn't do anything that made it seem like you are, that it is special that you are making this comparison to to rap labels being teams, right? Like, if you said, like, you know, rap labels are teams, and I'm, and then you said, like, the name of some up-and-coming, like, football player who everyone's trying to sign. You know, like, that's kind of, that works, you know? Or just make it seem like you're above the game. You know, like, oh, yeah. they're all teams, but I'm fucking Jordan. You know, like, I'm like I'm exactly. beyond it. Like, I don't even need mm-hmm. the teams because I'm doing my own shit. Like, that'd be a way to look at it, but, like, I'm a free agent. Y- yeah. <laughs> and, and what? <laughs> and what about it? Like, by the time you get to let me explain, which, by the way, the, just the title is like, dude... Ev- you've ex- Let me you've ex- you've explained <laughs> this shit on every fucking song. Like I fucking hear you. You're you're right though, actually, because I'm looking at like I'm remembering what the topic of the song was. Yeah, it was the like you know. Uh, oh, do you want to spend? Uh, you know the the uh, you got the glamour, the glitz, the fortune, and fame, but wasn't worth the sacrifice for the fortune you gave. And on the second half of the chorus, did it feel kind of awkward where he's like, wait a second, give me time to explain women in fast cars and Diamond Reigns can poison a rap star. Like, it just felt kind of stilted the way it was delivered. Yeah. he's He's got a delivery and uh, he's got a flow on here that he does a lot where it gets predictable, unfortunately, because he does it so much. Where, let's say if you have, like, set up punchline and then the next bar, set up punchline, he'll do, like, one, two, three, and then on the fourth one, he'll switch it up to a new rhyme scheme, and then he'll do one, I two, noticed three. I that. Next. So when you think it's going to rhyme for a second time, it doesn't, but it starts yeah. another rhyme scheme. But he does it on, like, every song. And And the thing about it is, that would seem like something that's an interesting thing to do, but it doesn't, it's not used well no. in a way that, like, is interesting or matters. A thing about an album being interesting, and this could be personal preference, but, like, I like when you got clever wordplay or shit that you actually have to kind of think about, or, like, you're kind of making, like, you're dropping names and references to things. I like stuff that you, that isn't very, like, basic, like, uh, surface level. What I wrote down was, 
I've never seen an album with this few annotations on Genius. <laughs> like, nobody has to explain a thing. It's exactly what it is. The name of the last song is The Breakup Song. And, and why is that the last song? You're going to end an album on a generic-ass breakup song? And, and dude... He ends the album with the most generic hip-hop drum beat sample. (laughs) I'm like, okay, come on. Like, this feels like someone, this feels like a pet project. Like, he doesn't really want to make, like, he doesn't want to be known as a personality. He was just like, yo, I just wanted to make a rap album. I wanted to know what it was like to make a rap album. That's what it feels like, yeah. This is your template for rap album, you know? I I need my one vaguely political song, but is so fucking broad in its commentary that it doesn't really talk about anything too specific. What song was that? Rumors of War. I thought that one was okay, though. Eh, it's better than most of them, but it's not great. I really dug that one. That was one of the best ones, actually. I wasn't Uh, feeling that. And The City. I liked The City in how, you know, it was the typical look out for the corruption of the world thing. But it kind of turned it into, like, actually saying to, like, kids, like, hey, you know, he says, uh, my advice is to stay away from criminal pursuits and don't let the city's venom taint your innocence of youth. You know, I, I just kind of like it, just sort of like, hey, man, stay away from this shit. You, it's not as cool as you think it is. You know, I, I like the framing of it. Like, instead Fucking of it being, Saturday like, morning ass PSA I ass. know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... But it was nice, you know. Oh, here's another one of his lines, by the way, uh, on Understand, where he says, I'm thinking hard as I improvise on how to be a huge success in this game as my failures become minimized. Like, it's just, pe- people don't talk like that. Like, how to be a huge success as my failures become minimized. I don't know, it's just, it's just a really awkward way of talking. And he did it purely just so the rhyme would fit in there. You know what I'm trying to say? And as much as I do like Rumors of War, I actually remember this. As much as I do like this song, it does feel like it's slightly overproduced at times. Uh, I felt like at the beginning of his verses, there would just be like an instrument or something like that that would just be like slightly too loud and it would just be like, whoa, whoa, what did he say there? And it's one of the songs where I felt like the rhymes were actually the most coherent and the most like really dope. And it was just like the production just kept being slightly too loud for it, you know? Here's my thing. Days of My Youth felt like what this album... Felt like the spirit of this album in a nutshell, right? This album is very... I love hip-hop. You know, I loved hip-hop in the early 90s. And so I wanted to make an early 90s hip-hop album. That's what Days of My Youth kind of feels like. And, uh, you know, it even has like literal direct references to like Illmatic and stuff like that where he talks about like you know my mom just thought they were a bunch of thugs that kept text on the dresser you know but I actually really I enjoyed this one I especially the chorus where he's like uh getting bad grades at school those were, those were the days of my youth and it's like rocking Jordans made me feel a little cool those were the days of my youth I love it, it was just like you know I, I felt like I was a cool guy when I had when I had Jordans like I, I love I like that little attachment of emotion of like I don't think, you know, like when a kid gets Jordan's like, it's not that he really thinks that he's the, you know, the hot shit and the best fucking person ever, but it's just like, it's just nice to be like, look, I'm a part of a thing and I'm able to be a part. You know, it's just that little feeling of, I got a little piece of this thing that's important to the cultural zeitgeist and I have it for myself. You know, that like, that's where that sort of affinity for certain pop culture things comes from, you know? I wasn't liking how, like, even with, like, the city, it was like, the city, the, the city, and then days of my youth are like, repeats it. I don't, I don't, I wasn't a fan of the repeating of the the name of the song in and the, the chorus. The choruses are simple. The choruses are simple. Yes, very much so. Overall, uh, my average came out to a 2.75, but I'll round that up to a 3, because people hate when I do .75 ratings. Overall, I give it a 3.5. Wow, a little, a little more generous than I was. Yeah, because, like, and, and you know, I, we ended up down it a little bit more, but it's just like, I think, it's at the end of the day, it's not a bad album. If you're just getting to, into hip-hop, like, I could see this being a really good entry point for you, you know, but... <laughs> That's such a, like, backhanded compliment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, man, well, if like, you don't if really you... know what rap is, but you want to check it out, and it isn't too challenging, and you don't really <laughs> got to think about it too much, I guess this is for you. 
Man, all right, now it feels worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's what it is, though. Like, I totally agree with you on that. And, like, and, and it's like, but he's not a weak lyricist. He's not bad. He's not shitty. He's just, he's slightly above average. But in a way that's not really that creative, so the above averageness doesn't really matter, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's got things he wants to say, but he's not really saying much of anything. There's a couple of times on here, um, when the interludes happen, there's a couple of just, like, instrumental interludes, and I'm like, dude, there was one or two of those interludes that were just like, this song just sounds like the next beat. Like, it could have just been the next beat. It's the exact... Some of these beats sound so fucking generic. In fact, it's one of the last instrumental tracks. That actually sounded like a way more interesting beat. And I was like, oh, shit, I can't wait to hear this. Oh, that was just an instrumental. Oh, well. And then it went to the next beat, and I was like, oh, crap, it's another generic, you know, soul and uh, dusty drums beat. You know what I mean? And it's just like, man, you feel bad kind of dumping on it. Because, like, it's not that it's horrible. It's just not... Eh, it's okay, you know? I feel that way about both of the albums. Like, I wasn't, like, blown away impressed, but, like, they weren't bad. Neither of them were bad. They both do kind of sound like, want to know what prog rock sounds like? It sounds like this. Want to know what hip-hop sounds like? It sounds, it sounds like, like this. Like, you know, like this. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, everyone, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. If that happens to be the first time you've heard our show... All the rolled episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search Goin Off Podcast. That's G-O-I-N apostrophe off podcast. Follow us on YouTube. Check us out on Twitter. Please check out our Patreons. Both the albums we talked about this week were Patreon requests. So if there's an album that you would like to hear us talk about, head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. Check the pages for details to find out how you can request an album to be talked about on the show as well. And until next week, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. Hey, Muse. Mm-hmm. What am I thinking? I, I don't know. You can't see? <laughs> you can't see what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>